The followers of Muhammad assert that the Quran is so beautifully written in the best Arabic language, an allegedly illiterate person like Muhammad could not have possibly been able to compose it, and hence, it could only have been divinely revealed. Can you shed light on these assertions? Like everything else in our series, we shall use the records of the Arabs and Muhammad and Islam to disprove and dismantle their lies one by one. In Arabic, muallaqat means suspended. These were magnificent poems composed by some of the most illustrious poets of Arabia long before Muhammad and his Quran. Even in the Arab world of today, they are honored as masterpieces of poetical composition. The days before Islam are called in Arabic al-Jahiliya, meaning the time of ignorance or barbarity. However, it was during this alleged time of ignorance and barbarity that many of the best and most beautiful and romantic Arab poetry were conceived, a fact recognized by the Muhammadan Muslims themselves. In those days, the Arabian Peninsula was divided among many small tribal territories and sheikhdoms. And in each tribe, there was a poet, Sha'ar, who was second in importance only to the sheikh, the head of the tribe. The poet was responsible for keeping the history and the genealogy of the tribe. And in his poems, he glorified the tribe and mocked its enemies. In reality, these poets were the news reporters par excellence of pagan Arabia. The names of some of these poets are Labid, Tarafa bin al-Abd, Al-Harith bin Haliza, Amr ibn al-Kalthum, Antara bin Shaddad al-Absi, Imr al-Qais. In some other traditions, three other names are also added. The lives of these poets were spread over a period of more than a hundred years. The earliest of the seven was the Arabian Christian Imr al-Qais, regarded by many as the most illustrious of Arabian Mu'allaqat poets. His exact date cannot be determined, but probably the best part of his career fell within the midst of the 6th century. It is a phenomenon which deserves the fullest recognition, that the needy inhabitants of a barren land should thus have produced an artistic poetry distinguished by such a high degree of uniformity. Even the extraordinary strict metrical system was observed by the poets, who had no inkling of theory and no knowledge of an alphabet excites enormous surprise. In the most ancient poems, the metrical form is as scrupulously regarded as in later compositions. The Mu'allaqat are seven pre-Islamic Arabic poems from around the 6th century AD that are considered the best of their kind. They are called the suspended due to the myth, which was developed about them during the Islamic period, that being the best poems of their time, they were written on parchments using golden ink and hung on the walls of the Kaaba for all to see. However, that name first appeared only a long time after the poems had been composed, since the title Mu'allaqat is not mentioned at all in the sources from that period. It is therefore a false myth, which comes from romanticizing the pre-Islamic period by the later Muhammadan scholars. Since the Arabic culture of that time was mainly oral, these poems were at first not written down, but recited and later memorized by individuals, usually the poets' apprentices. The first Mu'allaqat compilations were written in the beginning of the Islamic period, 7th to 8th centuries, about 200 to 300 years after they were composed. The number of poems that were included varied, but seven of these poems are considered a canon to this day. At the head of those seven is the one written by the Christian Arabian poet, Emrul Qais. It is very hard to translate classical Arabic poetry into English, as the language of the ancient poets in particular is amazingly rich, where complex notions can be expressed with very few words. Perhaps the oldest passage, where it is stated that the poems were hung up, occurs in Iqad al-Farid, the precious necklace by the Spaniard Ibn Abd Rabbihi. We read there, the Arabs had such an interest in poetry and valued it so highly that they took seven long pieces selected from the ancient poetry, rolled them in gold on pieces of Coptic linen folded up, and hung them up on the curtains which covered the Kaaba. Against this, we have the testimony of Al-Nahas, who says in his commentary on the Mu'allaqat, As for the assertion that they were hung up in the Kaaba, it is not known of any of those who have handed down ancient poems. This cautious scholar is unquestionably right, 
in rejecting a story so utterly unauthenticated. Even more pertinent is the fact that most of the pagan Arabs were illiterate and hence hanging these poems to be read would have been a useless exercise, especially since the Arabic written of those days did not yet have vowels and there were several different Arabic dialects. After all, the customs of the Arabs before Muhammad are pretty accurately known to us. We have also a mass of information about the affairs of Mecca at the time when Muhammad arose. But there is no trace of this or anything like it to be found in really good and ancient authorities. Up to a time when the art of writing had become far more general than it was before the spread of Muhammadan Islam, poems were never or very rarely written, with the exception perhaps of epistles in poetic form. Based upon all the information available, the diffusion of poetry was exclusively committed to oral tradition. In fact, even the Qur'an was memorized and transmitted orally to start with before it was committed to writing after Muhammad's death. In short, this legend, so often retailed by the Arabs and still more frequently by ignorant Europeans, must be entirely rejected. The most important conclusion derived from all the above has nothing whatsoever to do about the actual existence of the Mu'allaqat or not, but upon the fact that pre-Muhammadan illiterate poets were able to compose divine odes without divine intercession. Since Muhammad was not born in a vacuum, but was surrounded by both pagan and other religious influences, Muhammad's Qur'an too is also in the format of a qasida with a similar repetitive theme based upon the following. 1. A people are in error. 2. A prophet declares himself calling them to believe in the one and only Allah. 3. Most of his tribe ridicule and oppress him and continue in unbelief. 4. Allah visits them with catastrophes destroying most of them. 5. The prophet and a few of his followers are vindicated. 6. Muhammad also praised himself just as the Jahiliya poets did. Muhammad's Quran did not have to originate from a divine being, since the odes of the seven Mu'allaqat are even more beautiful, both in meaning and in structure, than the Quranic verses. The poets who recited these odes were just as illiterate as allegedly Muhammad was, but no one ever considered their poems the result of divine revelations. So why Muhammad's Quran? All we have, after all, are Muhammad's assertions that they were revealed to him by Allah, which are totally unsubstantiated. 